Bridge Cry Cyber Attack. Football Ford, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592 659 6151. The Demerara Harbor Bridge Corporation says it was the victim of a cyber attack last night after the video surfaced on social media of the LED scrolling lights of the bridge reading blank Guyana. I'll let you fill in the expletive of your choice. They have since issued a public apology for anyone who was offended by the vulgarity. The corporation's management has assured the public that this was a calculated attack with ill intent by an unknown person or group aimed at casting doubt on the corporation and its staff. They also promised to implement better systems and monitoring mechanisms to ensure that such incidents do not reoccur. Next, we go to the National Rump Shop, aka Parliament, where they are wrapping up debates for the budget, which we know is going to pass because the government will use its majority just as every other government has done before them. Anyway, Speaker of the National Assembly, Manzo Nadir, is facing accusations of bias against the opposition and unfair treatment of its members in the Assembly. The opposition members have said that this is a pattern of behavior from the Speaker throughout the budget debates. Nadir has denied the accusations, stating that he is trying his best to ensure fairness in the Assembly. In other news... The leader of the Liberty and Justice Party, Lennox Schumann, has expressed his support for the $781.9 billion national budget proposed by the government. Schumann has criticized the opposition members, particularly APNU AFC parliamentarian Don Hastings-Williams, for her contribution to the budget debate. He has also accused the correlation of discrimination and stalling the process of issuing land titles to indigenous people while in office. Opposition parliamentarian Volda Lawrence has called for the national budget to be presented before the start of the fiscal year, stating that doing so would result in less challenges. I mean, come on, it makes sense. I mean, why would you make a plan for the year midway through? Anyway, Lawrence is concerned about the 2023 national budget presented by the finance minister and believes that some of the measures outlined will not provide relief to poor people. She also believes that removing value-added tax on the importation of some electric vehicles and fiddling with the income tax threshold every year does little to leave more money in most people's pockets. Only rich people, but for most people it really doesn't matter. She believes that better measures can be implemented to guarantee that workers get more money annually. Minister of Home Affairs Ropes and Ben reported to the National Assembly that due to government efforts, there has been a steep reduction in all forms of serious crimes and an increase in the prison population. Ben said cases of robberies, murders, and violence have seen a 20% decrease in the past year and added that a 14% increase in the prison population was seen as a result of it. Ben also reported that there has been a dramatic increase in the seizure of narcotics due to better intelligence gathering being done. And in other news, Guyanese attorney and university lecturer Chevy A. Devnish has been selected by multinational firm Arnold & Porter K. Schoeller to take part in the law firm's prestigious foreign attorney program. This is the first time that a Guyanese attorney has been selected for the program. Devnish will be an active member of the firm's international corporate, financing, and time permitting international arbitration practices at the firm's Washington, D.C. office until July 2023. It's a new year. How about you make your truck run like new with Powered Automotive? Powered Automotive had truck parts and spares from all the major brands you know and love at prices you won't find anywhere else. Visit them at Locked 491 EE Eccles. Or call or WhatsApp them on telephone number 6970171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Ghana. Tired of waiting on hold, tracking down a delivery driver, or carrying cash for your food orders? GT Eat is here to make your life easier. Ghana's first cashless food ordering and delivery app. Choose from Georgetown's top restaurants, pay securely with your card, and get your food delivered right to your doorstep. With the convenience of being able to order from your phone and the added feature of tracking your order, GT Eats is the ultimate solution for all your food needs. Download the app on Apple and Android stores and start ordering the easy way today. All Uncut News viewers can get 10% off all orders made on GT Eats up until January 31st. The president has announced plans to establish a regional agri-tech campus in the nation in order to further advance food security efforts in the Caribbean. He stated that the government is looking to tap into the technological expertise of India, specifically the Bangalore Bio-Innovation Center, which has mastered technology that is efficient, cost-effective, and reliable. The plan includes re-engineering the supply and logistics change, research and development that deals with human resource training, technology, and the improvement in policies that will lead to greater yield and productivity. The president is currently leading CARICOM's food security initiative. 
In other India-related news, the MV Marlisha is expected to arrive in Ghana by early March. The Indian High Commissioner, Dr. K.J. Srinivasa, has announced that the vessel set sail from India for Guyana three days ago and is expected to arrive in Trinidad by the end of February before making its way to Guyana. Food for the Poor Guyana plans to construct 100 homes for vulnerable families across the nation this year and beneficiaries for which are yet to be identified. Last year, a total of 30 homes were constructed throughout the nation under the organization's housing program. A 35-year-old resident of Wisma Linton was taken into custody yesterday after attempting to bribe a team of police officers following the discovery of old dirty pi- I'm sorry, a firearm. The police were performing duties at 28 Miles Amelia Falls when they found the suspect. During the search of the camp, the police found a shotgun wrapped in a hammock. The suspect remains in custody pending further investigation and charges. Although there's no word from the police if theft of a historical object is among the charges he's facing. A six-year-old laborer was killed on Sunday in the Pomeroon River, Region 2. Harold Edwards was fishing in the river when a speedboat powered by a 15-horsepower outboard engine knocked over his wooden canoe. The boat's captain and his brother are presently in police custody, assisting with the investigation. Now for today's oil update. Halliburton announced total revenue for the full year of 2022 was US $20.3 billion, an increase of $5 billion, or 33%, from 2021. Halliburton is a prime contractor of ExxonMobil Guyana, the operator of the South American nation's largest and most lucrative offshore block, Stabra. In other Exxon-related news, ExxonMobil Guyana has announced that it will hold 10 meetings along the Guyana coast to discuss its planned whiptail development project with the public. The meetings, to be held from January the 30th to February 7th, are meant to solicit inputs on matters to be considered in the whiptail environmental impact assessment. The Environmental Protection Agency is expected to participate in these meetings. What exactly role they'll play there, well, that hasn't been... Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's latest car on sale. Currently on sale is this 2016 Toyota Crown Athlete. It comes with Bluetooth mark rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo fog lamps, park camera, and much, much more. Buy cash for $9.95 million. All pay as low as $1.99 million down with around $170,000 monthly for five years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the showrooms at Lot 171, Peter Rushi, Queens, or Lot 2, Lama Street, and tell them who you can send you for this sweet deal. It might not be robbery season, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business through Sheriff Security Service. Sheriff Security offers well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrol, canine services. These people even got drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest, now hire the best. Hire Sheriff Security Service today. You can multiply your cash by selling Digicel Top Up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a Top Up vendor quick and easy by linking with Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685-3109 for more info. Now for our uncut news, viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Ghana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel at least once. Last night I asked, how do you feel about the pace of the housing sector development? But before we get to that, I'd like to say a special thank you to our two paid supporters, Dion Nascimento and David Griffith. Thank you for your support, as it is what helps us bring you the news every evening. Jay Jiram says the housing development is going at a good pace, but there is always room for improvement, which I'm sure will happen as it progresses. However, David Beerman seems to disagree with that. He says the housing ministry should not pick up themselves. Many people apply for housing lots and end up waiting years and decades unless you know who to bribe. Another thing, with less than a million people in plenty of land, why does the Guyana government only give people a small piece of land where you can't even plant a nice garden? Also, why are they allowing the banks to choose who gets housing? Give Guyanese the land and let us choose how we'll finance our homes. Not everyone wants a 30-year mortgage being in debt to the bank. We know how to build our own homes. Many at the Ministry of Housing should be fired for having people wait years. Now for tonight's question, I want to know what questions you have for me, Noriko. So I want you to think about that question. Tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. And check us out on Monday for another. Until then, I'm Noriko Bullford saying have a great weekend. And as always, don't drink and drive. We'll end up on Monday's episode the hard way. Ha ha! Good night, folks.